All right, so we're just going to, we do have a guest, so we're going to wait a little bit, but in the meantime, um, I'm Caitlin Endo. I'm the Career Development Program Lead at Students Rising Above. Um, I'm joined by my awesome intern today who will be conducting the mock um, informational interview, which is super exciting. Um, and the reason why we're not sharing our uh, video right now is just because both of our internets are kind of choppy, so we're hoping that this will help. Um, but thanks for joining. For those that are starting to trickle in, um, we're just going to wait just a few minutes for our guest to come. If he ends up not being able to show up, then um, Eileen will interview me. But yeah, so um, just quick quick reminder for everybody. Um, so if you um, are, you know, watching this for credit, uh, please keep these things in mind. So if you're watching for credit, you must stay on for the entirety of the webinar. Uh, no logging off early. You will only receive credit if you are watching from the Zoom mobile app or on a computer. If you need to switch devices, make sure you do so within the next three minutes. If you have any questions, type them into the chat box and I will answer them anonymously at the end of the webinar. Um, so I also mentioned in the beginning, oh, hi Eric. <laughs> I mentioned in the beginning that Eileen and I are not sharing our screen because our, um, our internet's really funky. So we're hoping that this will, will help with the choppiness, but awesome. So before we get started, just a reminder. So last week there was another to explore um, various careers and various roles and to get real life um, details and experiences from someone, uh, which is obviously really valuable when you are um, kind of thinking through what, what types of jobs you're interested in wanting to pursue. So this is a mock informational interview, um, just so that you guys have an idea of what this uh, could look like. So we are joined by Eric, who's actually an advisor. If you guys haven't had the chance to meet him, I'm sure you've seen him around at some point. And we're super lucky to have him. Um, and Eric will be interviewed by Eileen, who is my intern this summer, and she's been doing an amazing job. So I'm really excited. Um, but yeah, so that's about it for me. I'm just going to sit back and let you two um, start your interview. So without further ado, <laughs> Eileen, do you want to introduce yourself quickly? I can. Okay. Um, so hi, my name is Eileen Velasco. I just finished my second year at Bryn Mawr College in Bryn Mawr, Pennsylvania, and I'm a psychology major. Yep, that's about it, I guess. Originally from San Jose, California. Awesome. All right, so whenever you're ready, Eileen, feel free to dive into your first questions for Eric. Um, before that, thank you for taking the time to be here. I know schedules are a bit hectic. Um, would you be able to tell me a little bit about your job and what um, are the core components of working as an advisor at SI? Yeah, so um, thank you for taking the time to interview me. Sorry for the initial hiccups in the beginning, had some technical issues with uh, Zoom, but glad it got worked out. Um, so I love being an advisor and uh, especially working for SRA. Uh, SRA is definitely unlike any other organization and unlike any other nonprofit I've ever been a part of, um, namely being the fact that they follow students to and through college. Uh, I think that through college is an aspect that's quite often missed amongst a lot of educational nonprofits and other organizations. Uh, so I really love that uh, SRA has a big emphasis on not just helping students apply and get to college, but also once they're there, how to navigate the difficulties of higher education, particularly for low-income, first-generation students of color who um, are a big group of SRA students. Um, 
so being an advisor mainly entails having a cohort of students uh, in various years of their educational journey. So starting off with their senior year in high school all the way through senior year of college. Um, so you'll have different students in different phases of their educational stage. Some might be just in their senior year, others might already have started as freshmen, sophomores. Um, and so you're gonna cater the work you do based on what year they are in school. Um, so for example, senior year in college, it's mainly focused on, I mean, sorry, senior year of high school is mainly focused on helping students apply to college, get their personal statements ready, um, looking into college and helping them have those conversations about where they ultimately wanna go and what they're looking for in a college. And then once they're actually at college, it's more focused on um, navigating the hurdles of higher education, making sure they register for classes on time, making sure that they understand and analyze their financial aid situations, helping advise them uh, when it comes to loans, uh, internship applications, interviews, everything that falls under professional development and career growth is a big emphasis for working with students who are in college. And it mainly just entails constant communication via email, text, phone calls, and in-person meetups, uh, pre-COVID-19, obviously. And um, yeah, it's just really a, a big emphasis on uh, personal communication and creating these connections with the students so that they see that it's more than just um, you know checking stuff off of a checklist, but also having genuine conversations with them and helping them to uh, navigate all the difficulties that come from senior year of high school all the way through graduating and looking for a job post-college. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, working with different students who are in different um, years in college and high school, does that make the job a little challenging? Because you have to balance sort of different responsibilities based on where they are in their um, college path. Yeah, that can be challenging at times. Um, you'll have students in various different stages of their early careers, of their college careers. Um, so it can be challenging at times to um, know exactly where each student is at, what they need help with the most. Um, and that just uh, prompts you to really be good with your organizational skills and um, yeah, creating tools for yourself to stay on top of everybody. So uh, stuff that really helps in any professional setting, but learning how to um, manage a cohort, learning how to uh, document and organize your notes from each meeting with students, um, things like that really help you stay on top of it and know exactly where each student is at in their various educational journeys. Um, so it can be difficult, but it only helps you to grow professionally and develop these skills that, as I mentioned, could be transferable to really any field. Um, so that, that helps in a way. Yeah, I know that aside from being an SRA advisor, you also have another job. Um, would you be able to talk a bit about that and how you are able to balance both of those responsibilities? Yeah, so um, I work in the tech field as a university recruiter at a tech company. And um, it definitely is a demanding job, a lot going on and it's very fast paced. You know, it's the corporate world. So definitely um, things moving at the speed of light. Um, so it, it was challenging at first trying to manage both my full-time role and also my part-time role with SRA. but um, Again, it only helps you further develop yourself professionally and kind of forces you to um, create new systems, new routines, and just be as organiz organized as you possibly can to make sure you're on top of every task for both jobs. Um, and I think the biggest uh, way I'm able to manage both of those is just creating boundaries for myself and creating a set work schedule for both of them so that I am ensured to 
dedicate my time to both uh, jobs equally and also make sure um, that I'm able to stay on top of every task that might come up uh, while at the same time creating, um, you know, a work-life balance for myself and sticking to that routine has really helped me stay on top of everything I need to accomplish, but also give myself uh, some time to myself so that I don't get burnt out, um, which is really important in any field you go into. Self-care and setting boundaries are um, really crucial for you to keep going and maintain that, that sense of balance for yourself. Yes, thank you. So the corporate world and working at a nonprofit, I feel like they are very differing in sort of um, industries. Would you be able to talk a little bit about your career path and how you were able, you were led to sort of working at SRA as well as where the tech company that you work at? Yeah, so um, let me just backtrack a little bit. I'm a UC Berkeley graduate class of 2016, and I majored in sociology, minored in education. So I was always really heavily interested in education and I loved working in the field of education. Um, that's where I started off my career post-graduation. I was working for a fellowship through UC Berkeley um, that does similar work as SRA. We uh, worked as college advisors stationed at different high schools throughout the Bay Area and the goal was to help students um, apply and get to college uh, and prepare for college. Um, and then I found out through SRA from my current fiance, she was actually an SRA student, now alumnus. And um, she, when we were both in college, um, I saw all of the amazing, amazing resources that she had access to and all the support she got from her amazing advisor. Um, and I really, you know, was always intrigued by that. And I really was happy for her that she had such a great support system. But I also wanted to get involved somehow and learn more. And once I found out that they, you know, help you not only get to college, but also through college and graduation, I thought it was just, you know, the perfect setting for me to um, continue my career in. So I applied and luckily I was offered the role at SRA and have been enjoying it ever since. So at this time, I'm still in education for my full-time job and uh, working for SRA part-time. This was about two years ago. Um, so I was still fully in the education field, um, but I always had an interest in tech and the corporate world as well, namely um, trying to get more students from my similar background, students from the similar backgrounds of the SRA students into these spaces. Um, and I felt like I was doing that with uh, the role that I had through, um, through my fellowship, but I always felt like I could do more by actually being in these spaces myself. So I always wanted the opportunity to get into that tech industry, get into that space. And luckily um, a good colleague of mine from college he referred me to an opening he had at his company and um, I did a research on it. I found out what they were about, you know, their company culture um, and just the really cool and interesting tech that they're involved in. And it really intrigued me that um, it was tech that helps improve the world. So I, I thought it was, you know, just the perfect setting for me to get into to still give back and help how I can, but also learn more about this tech and corporate world where I can uh, better help students in. So now I'm working as a university recruiter in the tech field and um, I love it because I kind of get the best of both worlds. I learn about the tech and corporate world but also I'm working directly with college students who come from similar backgrounds as us and I'm helping them get into these spaces and learn how they can best prepare for uh, after graduation and getting into these type of career paths. So I've been truly enjoying it and, uh, and I'm just glad the way things worked out, but it all came down to uh, referrals and knowing people on both jobs with my part-time job with SRA and also my current job in the tech world. So if there's one thing I can plug, I highly recommend you network, network, network as much as you can, meet people because most of the time uh, as they say, it's not what you know, but who you know. 
So very important to establish these professional connections as you go through college and post-college. Yes, thank you. Networking is super duper important. Um, but would you have any recommendations for any good internship experiences or volunteer experience that one should consider before working at a nonprofit such as SRA or even just in a role that you are in, similar to the one that you are in in that tech company? Yes, definitely. Um, so I, my biggest recommendation would be just to have an open mind apply to anything and everything that you have the capacity to. Um, this job market is very limited and um, there's a lot, a lot of competition out there. So you wanna cast your net out really wide. That way you have more opportunities to hear back and hopefully things work out for internships that you're truly interested in. But I would say do not uh, close the door on internships before you even get a chance to know what they're about or what you can learn from them. Even if they might not be in your particular area of study, it will definitely, definitely help you somehow, some way later down the road, no matter what the internship is, you will develop skills and experiences that I guarantee will come up at some point in your professional life. So no matter what it is, I recommend you just apply. And then once you hear back, you can make the decision on what you think which internship you think is best for you. But with everything being so competitive, um, as I mentioned, you'll just wanna keep an open mind and give things a chance that you might not have thought of otherwise. So even if you're in the medical route and you're uh, you know, really set on becoming a doctor and going to medical school, that doesn't mean that you can't have a summer internship, um, for example, just off the top of my head, because we've been talking about it, but based in education, and managing a cohort of students for a summer education program. That's something I did um, during my time as an undergraduate, and it has really helped me to grow professionally, um, become a leader, speak publicly, uh, work with students one-on-one, -on -one, and manage my conversations with um, students who come from difficult backgrounds. So it really, really tied into my experience uh, as I got older and got into more professional roles. But as I mentioned, these are all skills that are really transferable amongst various different fields. So it would still look good on your resume and would still be very valuable experience, even though it's not exactly the field that you're trying to get into later on. But just the fact that you take on an internship, um, show growth, show what you have learned and everything you have experienced, it will really go a long way. And something I like to tell students is uh, landing an internship is like a domino effect. It's really hard to get that first one, as it is with any job. Uh, as you'll always hear, jobs are looking for people with experience, but how are you gonna get that experience without getting your first job, you know? Same with internships. Um, kind of difficult to get your first one because you really don't have any experience prior to that. But once you get that first internship, that's professional experience that you have on your resume that will lead to the next internship and then the next one and then eventually a full-time role. But each next role or internship that you get will get closer and closer to the actual field that you would like to study and the career field you want to get into. So you might start off with something, for example, education, and then uh, your, next, um, your next internship might be a STEM summer program. So still kind of education, but more working more so with STEM. And then that internship leads to a um, summer program abroad where you're helping a health clinic in a foreign country. So everything leads to the next step. So just keep an open mind and um, be open to internships that might not be under the exact major or field of study that you wanna get into because it will be valuable experience for you later down the road. Um, do you think there's a specific set of skills that are valued in this industry or like a specific skill that you should definitely try to develop that will help you as you um, consider this type of job or a job in this field? 
Uh, sorry, in the field of education or the tech and corporate field? Um, both. Okay, yeah. Um, so for both, for any field, any field that you get into, uh, I would say organization, key, key, key. Uh, no matter what you do, being organized, being somebody who has everything together, not messy and, um, you know, have emails piling up and unorganized, but somebody who has everything organized down to their emails, their to-do list, calendars, um, keeping all of that organized will greatly, greatly help you in any field because it will allow you to act and respond really quickly, um, which people really, really like and it will go a long way for you to show that you're on it, you're um, you know, on top of everything, that you don't miss anything. And uh, yeah, it, it just shows a lot on your professionalism. That's another key word I would say. Just in general, professionalism, um, navigating both the corporate and educational world, really any field. Uh, there's tips and tricks that you come to learn as you get into it, as you get into a professional career that most of us are not taught coming from the backgrounds that we come from, but little things such as sending thank you emails to an executive speaker after they give a presentation to your team or um, reaching out for help when you need it. That's a really, really big sign of professional development that you're able to admit when you need help and you care so much about the work that you're not gonna let your ego uh, stop you from reaching out to get that help and um, so just being professional uh, being having those uh, professional etiquette really will take you a long way um, so as I mentioned being organized having professional etiquette um, responding to emails quickly uh, taking initiative is another another key aspect in professionalism and helping you in any field but um, take initiative to research something before you ask a question. Instead of asking the same small question each day, take some time to see if you can find the answer in your company's database or um, ask a coworker who might know before going to uh, somebody higher up. So I would say take initiative uh, and with taking initiative also uh, do things that are not asked of you from your manager so if you see a process that can be improved or if you think that creating a step-by-step -step guide for one of your processes at work or even just taking the time to create a google doc for your team when you're brainstorming uh, for a presentation whatever it might be taking that initiative and volunteering and going the extra mile will really, really help you stand out and um, will really show that you're a big team player and a valuable um, member of the team. So definitely stay organized, learn professional etiquette, and take initiative as much as you can. Yeah, I totally see that in my role in SRA. I am the programs and operations rotational intern. And one of the things that has helped me balance everything very, very well is the organizational skills and keeping in communication with my manager, Caitlin, and other people on the team as well. And that has been super, duper helpful. So hearing that from someone in the field and knowing that I'm sort of on the right track is good to hear, I think. Yeah. Um, kind of changing it up a bit. We talked a bit about the challenges about working as an SRA advisor and sort of balancing two jobs, what would you say is the most rewarding or the thing that you like the most about your job? It could be SRA or even being a recruiter at a tech company that you work at. Um, yeah, so they're actually both, uh, the rewarding aspect for both is kind of similar. Um, I love seeing young students succeed. That is my ultimate like goal with my um, with both careers. I love seeing students do well. I love hearing success stories. And I especially love when students overcome the boundaries, the um, setbacks, the difficulties that they've been given in life. And so through SRA, that's seeing students 
um, get accepted to their favorite colleges, that's seeing students land internships during college, that's seeing students get good grades throughout college, that's seeing students actually graduate and have a job lined up for them after college. Um, so all of those things really um, make it rewarding for me and uh, I, I just love seeing that and love seeing students succeed. And in the same aspect as a university recruiter, uh, we work directly with interns and new college grads. So people who are either still in school or fresh out of school, and they're very, very early on in their career. Um, they might not have all the answers, you know, they're still navigating the professional world as most students are, for example, in SRA. So it's really rewarding to help them throughout their internship because part of my role is to um, kind of career coach them, talk to them about how their internship is going, talk to them about how they can improve and uh, what they can do for potential full-time conversions later down the road. Uh, and so it's really rewarding to see um, somebody go from an intern that I barely know to having professional career chats with them throughout their internship to seeing them land a um, a full-time conversion offer uh, after their internship. And then the cherry on the top is really seeing them become uh, managers on their team. And then I uh, recruit for interns and new college grads to join them with them as the manager. And so it just comes full circle like that. And it's really rewarding to see these students both in SRA and in the tech world um, succeed through the various stages of their professional careers. Yeah, um, and thank you for helping people who come from similar communities to us and helping them to succeed and working with students who are SRA who um, are sort of trying to navigate their way through a college environment, which can be very challenging at times. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm actually gonna jump in real quick because we are almost at time. So Eileen, if you wanna ask one more question, then we'll um, wrap up after that. Um, my final question was actually going to be more about your career. Um, so where do you see your career going after SRA? Do you think there'll be any more switches or are you sort of content in the space that you're in right now? Yeah, good question. Um, to be honest, I'm still navigating that. I'm still trying to figure that out. And I say that for anybody who might be listening or who might view this recording later, uh, especially if you're a college student, especially if you're a high school senior, there's absolutely no way for you to know exactly what your career is going to be. You might have an idea of what you're interested in and what you want to get into, but I just can't emphasize enough to keep an open mind, try new things, explore different fields because you might be fully set on one career path, but just trying something new, trying an internship here or volunteer work there will expose you to the different fields and experiences there are. And who knows, you might find something that you truly enjoy a lot more. So um, my career path is still being worked out, but ideally I would like to continue as I am working in both spaces of education and the corporate tech world until I eventually have enough means to be able to start my own nonprofit and just work on that fully um, and dedicate all of my time to that, which would help uh, similar students of the backgrounds as SRA students come from. Yeah, definitely. Things are constantly changing and one never really knows what the future has in plan for you. Um, just the last thank you for taking the time to speak with me today. I really appreciate it and appreciate all the insight you gave me into not only working at SRA, but also working as a recruiter at the tech company. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. I'm happy to help out and uh, I really enjoyed um, discussing this with you. So thank you.
sorry. I think I was frozen for a little bit, but I just wanted to say thank you again for everything. This was really awesome. And it was nice to learn about you, Eric, <laughs> uh, listening in. Um, and Eileen, you did a really great job. So this is a perfect example of how You might have gone frozen again. Oh, can you hear me? Oh, uh, yeah, we can hear you now. Okay, I was just saying thank you for everything. Um, it was really fun just listening into the conversation. Um, yeah, so, yeah. Thank you. Awesome. All right. Well, I hope everyone enjoys the rest of their day, and we will see you again sometime soon. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.